Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat number 114, featuring a retrospective of one of the greatest computer role-playing games of all time, Richard Garriott's Ultima 4, The Quest of the Avatar. And here we go. This is Ultima 4, the fourth game in the Ultima franchise, the fifth if you count a Calibeth, the World of Doom. Now this was 1985, and the second Ultima game published by Richard Garriott, Lord British's own company, Origin. So yeah, pretty much had complete control over this product, and that's probably why we had such a magnificent pack-ins, two big manuals, even uh, threw in a metal onk, <laughs> which uh, the game was difficult enough, you probably do need a little totem like that to maintain your momentum and your sanity. Now this is the DOS version. Uh, this is what's available for free right now from God, goodoldgames.com. It's got a couple of problems, though. Uh, the most noticeable to me is it is lacking the music. So I'll just pipe in the Apple II music. Uh, this is simulated or emulated through my Apple Win emulator and two simulated Mockingboard sound cards. <laughs> I've never actually heard these uh, Mockingboard cards in real life, so I have no idea how accurate this is, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, it sort of reminds me of the Nintendo, Nintendo music. Alright, so what's going on here story-wise? Well, like all of uh, the Ultima games, the story is very simplistic. Uh, there's an evil wizard that has taken over the world and brought eternal winter. And it's your job to find six magical orbs that you will use to vanquish the warlord and restore balance and harmony to the lands of Britannia. Or at least that would be the story. If Garriott hadn't become enlightened. <laughs> yeah, basically what happened was he got a lot of complaints from parents and so-called concerned citizens about his previous games promoting violence and bad behavior. And that really bothered the young Garriott, so he wanted to do something about it. And this game is basically his mission, not just to make a good game, but actually to improve society. There's some language from the manual that I'll read to you here. As an addendum to this work, I, Lord British, would like to speak of the quest of the a Avatar mentioned in these pages. The quest of the Avatar is the search for a new standard, a new vision of life for which our people may strive. We seek the person who can become a shining example for our nation and guide us from the age of darkness into the age of light. And it goes on and <laughs> in that vein for a while. So... Uh, you really get the impression that Garriott was drinking his, uh, his Kool-Aid here. Well, but who knows, maybe uh, this game did have an impact on people and make them more virtuous. Couldn't have hurt at any, any rate. You know, I love, too, the fact that this it starts off in a, in a Renaissance fair. And, uh, of course, Garriott had a, he was a frequent participant, and I probably still is, in Renaissance fairs. Now, I assume you've probably been to one if you're nerdy enough to be watching this video, but... Just in case you haven't, you really should check them out. They're all over the place. You dress up in fun costumes and see some medieval crafts and see very large women in very small corsets. Highly recommended, especially if you've had a few drinking horns full of mead. Okay, so here we are. This is the big innovation of the game, or one of the biggest innovations. So instead of just uh, choosing a class, rolling some dice, and that sort of thing... Uh, the player has to answer questions based on ethical and moral dilemmas. And there's no uh, right or wrong answer per se, but uh, how you answer them will determine your character's class and has some effect on the stats. Now this setup uh, works a little bit better in some places than it does in others. Uh, for instance, honesty is associated with a mage. Uh, for whatever reason, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, but it does make sense that a valor, uh, that the virtue of valor would be associated with a fighter, and uh, honor would be associated with a paladin and so on. Uh, but that's the whole game is based around these eight virtues. So each of the virtues has its own color, class, town, a dungeon, a mantra, a companion, and a shrine. So by the end of this thing, you will have thought a lot about all these different virtues. So hopefully uh, that will ingrain itself somehow into your personality. All right, so here is the start for the mage class. Each of the different classes starts off at a different, uh, near a different town. And you need to go inside the town and start talking to people. Uh, you're probably familiar with this if you've ever, ever played any Nintendo uh, RPGs or Japanese role-playing games of uh, the early 80s. 
you have to talk to everybody. And unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on your uh, perspective, there's no menu to choose from. Uh, you just have to type in keywords. I was reading on one site that uh, you don't have to type in the whole word, just the four or five letters. Uh, I couldn't seem to get that, that to work. Uh, but anyway, you're trying to figure out uh, where is the rune, because there's a, a rune hidden somewhere here uh, that you'll need when you get to the shrine. Uh, you'll need to find out where the shrine is. Uh, you'll need to find out uh, what the mantra to the shrine is. <laughs> so there's a lot of information that you need to piece together. Um, obviously, uh, you can take careful notes if you want to do this the uh, Richard Garriott way, Lord British way. <laughs> Probably more likely nowadays you're going to go to a walkthrough or a uh, clue book site and uh, get a lot of this information. Uh, but you still need to go to the different towns and, and at least find the runes. Oh, I forgot the dungeons. <laughs> Yet more to this game. <laughs> uh, there's all these dungeons based on the opposite of uh, the virtues. So deceit uh, instead of uh, honesty, for example. So eventually you're going to have to find these dungeons and go into them. But uh, that's uh, going to be uh, much later in the game after you've recruited some party members. You can have up to uh, up to eight, including yourself. Uh, so we're not going to... I will show you a dungeon later in this video, but... Uh, for now, we're just gathering information and supplies. Now, I should mention uh, uh, this interface here. The F is your, the amount of food that you have. Now, just like in real life, you will need food. Uh, that's what this F colon 300 means. Uh, fortunately, this ticks down fairly slowly, so you don't have to constantly keep wandering back to town. But it is something to keep in mind. If you let it get down to zero, you are dead. Of course, you also have hit points. And something else that's uh, interesting about this game is the magic system. I'm going to skip a bit and show you what it's like uh, to create your spells. Uh, the first step will be to re acquire the reagents or ingredients for the spells. Uh, naturally, the uh, mage's starting town has a magical herb shop who has a Shakespeare as a customer. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. A lot of uh, literary allusions... Uh, sprinkled throughout this uh, game. Let's see who this uh, other, you know, there's uh, Shakespeare. Let's see if he knows uh, Hamlet. Oh, I guess he can't help me with Hamlet. <laughs> it's too bad if you're going to do your English literature homework based on this game. I guess you're out of luck. Uh, this guy over here, uh, you can talk to him too. I'm not, you know, I have to admit, I'm not really impressed with this, uh, uh, with this parser. It's, uh, to me, it's really kind of boring. <laughs> I know there are people out there that uh, love this stuff, though. So, Okay, here is uh, Marjo, Margo. I'm going to buy some reagents. See there, I've got uh, sulfurous, sulfurous ash, ginseng, garlic, spider silk, blood moss, black pearl. Um, now those are some. It, you, you might wonder, how do I know what ingredients go with which spells? Uh, well, that, of course, is what you'll need your instructions and manuals and <laughs> such as that. Uh, there's quite a bit to remember. Uh, there's no helpful screens uh, like you'd find in a, in a later game. There's no uh, automatic journal keeping, nothing like that. Uh, this is all uh, based on your notes. Uh, as I said, the game did ship with a nice map, but even that <laughs> has runes on it instead of <laughs> plain English. Uh, so there's just you know quite a bit you have to, to learn to play this and enjoy it. But... Um, one thing that you'll definitely want to make sure you're stocked up on is this cure spell. There are so many ways to get poisoned in this game, it's, it's ridiculous. And if you get poisoned, you'll, uh, your health will just start ticking down like crazy until you're dead. And so you have to make sure you've always got some of these cure potions on you. Uh, quite a few. And uh, also uh, your other spells, magic missiles, fireballs, and all that kind of stuff, you're going to need reagents for those. So it's a good idea to stock up. And then uh, finally... You'll notice that uh, I'm getting to. She's asking me how much do I pay. Uh, this is a you could pay her less, uh, but then your honesty score, see, you'll start to go down. So, well, you know, even here, even just buying things, Garriott has uh, worked all of this emphasis on virtue into almost every aspect of the game. All right, so let's get out of town. See if we can find a moon gate and get to Lord British. Um, now this is the Overland map and. As you can see, there's a mob, there's a rogue there trying to catch me. You can try to get away from these guys, avoid them, uh, but they'll probably catch you eventually. Now, you can't just kill anything you come across. 
if it's a, a non-evil creature like a bear, you're supposed to just run away from it, flee from it. Um, however, I'm assuming that this rogue is a dirty bastard and deserves to die, so <laughs> it's going to whack him to death with my staff. He's doing quite a bit of damage. I'm down to 179G up there, as you can see. I should have probably uh, cast some spells on him, but... Die! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's taking a while to kill this guy. I probably should have picked up a sling. Oh, there he's on the run, so... Uh, you probably want to let him get away. That's probably better for your virtue score, right? Now, the chest <laughs> was trapped, <laughs> so it took more damage. Oh, here's the troll and the troll bridge. There we go. There's my magic missile. Let's see if I can cast a fireball, maybe. That's kind of nice. Ah! <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> so I'm down to 135. Should probably uh, heal up here. And uh, that's not a big deal. Let's just make camp. Um, unfortunately, sometimes uh, monsters will show up and interrupt your rest. Let's see if we can rest up this time. Oh, well, got it. Okay, so you got that big map that came with the game. It mentions where the moon gates are. These are basically teleportation gates. Uh, but you have to pay attention to these moons, moon phases at the top of the window there. Uh, they'll only show up in certain spots during uh, certain phases and then they'll take you to different points based on that second moon so again uh, quite a, nothing is straightforward <laughs> nothing is straightforward in this game i mean wouldn't it have been nice if it just popped up a little menu but ah there i found the super walmart actually no that's the castle britannia where lord british sits you know you know it must take a certain amount of uh, moxie or <laughs> whatever you want to call it to Actually, put yourself in your own game as a as a king. Uh, that's uh, Lord British for you. Okay, so this jester wants to know if I have an onk. Did I mention? I think I mentioned that the game actually included a, a little metal onk. Uh, people always uh, want to mention that. One thing I will say about uh, Gary it is he was really good about packaging. I mean, nowadays we're just digital downloading uh, stuff from GOG. Uh, but back in the day, and even today, if you want to get on eBay, it's we're tracking a box copy down with all the stuff. I think you'll like the game a lot better. Okay, so how do I get up a ladder? Um, you might think it's C for climb, but actually it's K for climb. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I guess you know he had to. He wanted C to be cast a spell. I mean, that's a good example there of how, how, you know, this is why this game is so difficult for people to get into nowadays. It's just very arbitrary stuff like that. Uh, nowadays, of course, they'd probably have a little menu, uh, mouse-driven thing. Uh, some better way than just K for climb. <laughs> but, oh, there he is. Uh, hi, Lord British. Lord British rises. He's actually quite helpful. He will heal you. Uh, for free, all you have to do is just say you don't feel well. <laughs> you know, I, I like to see a, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, give some kind of a exam of Garriott through his games and, and see what kind of personality personality profile emerges. Oh, there they are, the eight um, virtues. Wow, there's a lot. <laughs> it's a, a shit ton of virtues. Oh, God. Okay, so... There's actually a rune hidden somewhere in this castle that we have to find. Uh, but, you know, British will tell you uh, which towns are associated uh, with which virtues. And, you know, this, everything is here. You don't have to go to a clue book. I mean, you can find out everything if you're willing to talk to everybody. And, and again, take careful notes. Uh, that will take a long time, though. I think I saw some, somewhere that it takes at least 100 hours uh, to finish this game. Um, I don't know if that's based on using a walkthrough or not, but I can say this would definitely take a while for anybody to get through. I should mention, too, that you need to uh, keep an eye on your experience points and talk to British, uh, who will promote you uh, to the different levels. And that's really important because it gives you more hit points. All right, so I uh, <laughs> divined <laughs> uh, that the rune is here somewhere. Now, I can't just get the chest because that would be stealing. I had to search. Ah, and there we go, the rune of spirituality. So I guess the hardcore of the hardcore back in the day would just search every tile of every 
uh, village and town until he found these runes. Of course, you, you can get subtle clues, but they don't tell you exactly where they are. But again, it wouldn't be impossible uh, to do this just based on that. But I, <laughs> for what it's worth, I, would, I couldn't wait to get to a walkthrough. You know, I played this for about three days. It took me a long time to, to even figure out the basics. Uh, but then, you know, as I'm looking at walkthroughs and, and websites about the game, you start to get an idea of this, the incredible size of this thing. I mean, I didn't even get, I didn't even just barely scratch the surface of this thing. I mean, I think, if, I think you could easily spend uh, months, if not years, uh, playing through this. I mean, you eventually you start to get ships. Uh, you can travel to different uh, islands and continents, I suppose. Uh, just a hell of a lot to explore. I just got promoted, so I've got uh, 400 health now. <laughs> That'll come in handy. Uh, let's uh, skip ahead, and, and I'll, I'll show you the dungeon that I found. I think the dungeons are one of the coolest things about this game. It takes a little bit of work to find them. Uh, you look at, can look at the map and find them, of course. Uh, but what's cool, though, is it switches uh, perspectives on you. Of course, you know, they did this in the other Ultima games, too. Uh, but I still think it's really neat. Uh, and also, you can get uh, maps of these dungeons from the clue book uh, that Gog uh, includes with this uh, package. But as you can see, these are very primitive, very primitive uh, 3D graphics. But uh, what's neat is, uh, unlike Wizardry or Bard's Tale, uh, when you get into combat, it looks like this. You get this sort of top-down uh, tactical perspective. And, of course, this is all turn-based, which is uh, all things that I, I enjoy. I imagine that becomes uh, quite complicated once you get a full party uh, with seven other characters to, to play with. It's got to be fun. Oh, that's a weird-looking yeah, <laughs> monster. What, the, what is that? Spider. Well, these are probably considered non-evil. That's, you know, a nice touch that they try to poison you. Did I mention that you get poisoned? <laughs> I must have gotten poisoned a thousand times uh, playing this. And again, that'll kill you quick if you don't have uh, any of those cure spells. Oh, there's a little chest, a little 3D chest. You see, I've been poisoned, so every step now I <laughs> just cry out in agony. <laughs> Fortunately, I thought ahead and packed some remedy, so I'm good to go. Now, I have to admit, uh, that DOS version from GOG is not what I would play, uh, given the choice. There's lots of uh, ports of this game. Uh, this is what I would recommend. This is XU4, which is a remake. As you can see, it's got nicer graphics. It's got music. It's <laughs> more pleasing to the eye. It has a lot of nice uh, features, and, but it's uh, basically the same game. I'm sure there must be some subtle differences, and maybe a, a purist would object. But this is a free program. You can easily find this and get it running almost as e easily as you can the GOG package. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the, the differences between all the ports. I mean, there's ports for the Amiga, the, of course, the Commodore 64, uh, the Atari computers. A lot of uh, choices that you have when you want to play Ultima 4. So if you've got some experience, I'd like to hear from you about it. All right, I think that's going to do it for Ultima 4. Obviously, I just uh, barely scratched the surface of this, but hopefully you, you saw enough uh, to decide if this is something uh, worth pursuing. And if you have uh, thoughts, I'd love to hear them. I just post them on YouTube or at Armchair Arcade. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with the first part of my interview with the Dungeon Siege and Total Annihilation creator, Chris Taylor. It's a really good interview, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I want to thank everyone who has been donating and supporting the show. It means a lot to me personally, as well as uh, keeping these shows going. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for all of that. And as always, I want to leave you with a quotation, uh, this time from William Shakespeare. And it goes something like this. Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness. And some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> See you guys next week. Let me go back in there and face the perilous. No, it's too perilous. Look, my duty is a knight. Stop as much peril as I can. No, we've got to find the holy ground. Come on. Don't let me have just a little bit of peril. No, unhealthy.